Welcome to session one of our Corel Draw questions series. I'm Roger Wombolt, Senior Product Trainer at Corel. In this video, we'll be answering questions submitted by Corel Draw users on a variety of topics. If you're watching this video on YouTube, click on the link in the description below to get to our tutorial page. Here you can download a written copy of the Q&A session and submit your own questions to be answered in future videos. Let's begin. The shape tool is missing from my toolbox. How do I get it to where it belongs? It's possible to inadvertently remove or delete a tool from the toolbox or an item from the toolbar. If this should happen, there's a couple of ways to get it back. You can try the quick customize icon located here and ensure that the shape tool is selected. Here we can see that it is not. I'll click on this, click off this panel, and here I can see my shape tool is now back where it belongs. If this doesn't work, the other thing you can try is resetting the defaults for the application. Now there's two ways you can do that. The first would be to hold the F8 key down when you launch the application, and in doing so, you'll see a message that says, are you sure you wish to overwrite the current workspace settings with the factory defaults? Answer yes to that. If by chance that still doesn't work, hold down the Windows key, which is to the left of the spacebar, and tap the letter R at the same time. That's going to open up the Run dialog box. Type in percent %APPDATA% percent, and click OK. Now this will open up the application data folder from within Windows. In here, open up the Corel folder and rename the Corel Draw Graphics Suite version that you want to reset. In doing so, when you relaunch the application, hold the F8 key down again, you'll get that same message. Are you sure you wish to overwrite the current workspace settings with the factory defaults? Say yes to that, and that will completely reset the defaults as though you freshly installed the application. How do I download the Color Chart Creator extension, and is it available in CorelDRAW 2019? The Macros menu is not under Tools in this version. Yes, the Color Chart Creator is available in CorelDRAW 2019, but it does not need to be downloaded as an extension. If you're using CorelDRAW 2017 or later, the Color Chart Creator can be found under Tools, Scripts, Run Script. This is not a feature that is in the Home and Student version of CorelDRAW. Now the Color Chart Creator can be very useful if you're trying to see what specific color would look like when it's printed on a specific substrate, such as fabric. To create a color chart, from the Tools menu, down to Scripts, and then Run Script. Here, under Macros In, I'm going to select Color Chart Creator and click Run. Now this particular script works with any color palette that is currently open on screen. And as you can see, I've got a Pantone uh, FHI polyester color palette opened up. I've got my document color palette and the default color palette. I'm going to select the Pantone palette. I'll leave my spacing at 0.2 and then click OK. The script has run and it has now created a document for me that I can then print out on a piece of fabric and get an idea as to what that color is going to look like once it's printed. I have a graphic that I use as a registration mark. How can I set it up as a symbol so that it is always available? Symbols are unique user-defined objects that can be used to manage multiple instances of a design element in CorelDRAW. Using symbols is a great way to speed up the design process and can also reduce file size when using a symbol in place of an object that appears many times. If you edit a symbol in a CorelDRAW file, it will automatically update all other instances of that symbol throughout the document. To create a symbol is fairly easy. I'm going to take this custom registration mark, select it, right click, and I'm going to select a symbol, create new symbol. I'll give it a name, I'm going to call REG, and then click OK. Now, if I open up my Symbols Docker from the Windows menu, 
down to Dockers, and then Symbols. I'll see the symbol in here. I can now drag out as any number of occurrences that I want to and position those on the screen. When saving a file, I get a message stating that the font cannot be embedded. This is a font that I have loaded on my computer and a new file that I have created. There are four different levels of licensing for fonts. They are editable, installable, non-embedding, and print and preview. In CorelDRAW and in CorelDRAW Font Manager, we have filters that will allow you to filter by the licensing capabilities for these various fonts. With your text selected, from the font drop-down, select Filters, and you can scroll down and we can see the different licensing or embedding rights that we have. If I select Editable or Installable, I will see fonts that I can use that will carry over to another document. The workaround to not being able to embed a font would be to convert the text to curves. What language is scripting done in? Scripting in CorelDRAW is done in VBA or Visual Basic for Applications via Tools, Script, Script Editor. You can also script it with Visual Basic.net via Tools, Script, VSTA Editor. To use the VST editor, you will need to install Visual Studio 2019. Is there a way to turn off the shadow on the right and bottom of a page? Well, this can make it easy to see the boundaries of the page. There may be a need or a desire to turn this off. An easy way to do that is to double click on the shadow of the page this is going to go into the Options panel under Page Size and simply deselect Show Page Border. When I click OK, this border will disappear. Now, in order for to, us to bring that back, simply go to the Layout menu, down to Document Options, and then you can turn this feature back on. How do I share a file with a client if the client does not have CorelDRAW? There are a couple of ways that you can share a file with a client. Publish to PDF is a good one. Go to File, Publish to PDF, or use the Publish to PDF icon on the toolbar. Here you can put in your file name or click on Settings. And within settings, you can make adjustments such as embedding fonts, adding PDF password, or including printer marks. I'm going to cancel out of this. Now, the other way is to use a new collaboration tool that's available within CorelDRAW subscription for CorelDRAW 2020. Go to Windows, down to Dockers, and select Comments. In here, click on Save and Share, and then select save and share on this dialog box. What this will do is it's going to launch the CorelDraw.app where you'll have the ability to share this file out. In this dialog box, you can copy the URL and put it into an email sent to the client or by entering the email address here, when you close the dialog box, it's going to send an email to the customer that will then allow them to review the file make comments, suggestions, and send it back. I'm going to align text to a path. It's a circle. But when I click on the fit text to path, and then the object, I get the object you selected is invalid. What's happening? When fitting text to a path, there are a couple of things that need to be observed. First, the path should be a single vector object and not grouped with anything else. And secondly, the text must be artistic text and not paragraph text. If I select this piece of text, I have two options. I can either go to the text menu and down to fit text to path, or I can right click and drag this to my ellipse, let the mouse button go and select fit text to path. This has now effectively put the text on the path for me. I have the ability to move this to a different location if I wish, simply by grabbing this node and moving it around. Now, because this is a compound object, I cannot 
right click and drag and fit that to the path. What I need to do instead is go to my text menu and down to fit text to path and then I can indicate where the path is. Once I'm happy with that, I'll simply click my left mouse button that positions the text on the path. Now, in order to flip this over and reverse it, an easy way to do that is from the interactive property bar, I'm going to click on mirror horizontally and mirror vertically. Now I can grab this glyph and just pull that away to set the same distance as the one above it. Thank you for joining us for the Corel Draw Question Session 1. If you're watching this video on YouTube, click on the link in the description below to go to our tutorial page. Here you can download a written copy of this Q&A session and submit your own questions to be answered in an upcoming video.